So in our previous video, we made this power pivot and we analyzed crime data year to year, month to month. And we made this nice line chart out of this. So on this, we're going to expand. So the next thing I want to look at, I want to see how's crime rate over time. So it looked like when I was looking at my data that it was decreasing over time. But let's illustrate that on a chart. So I don't want to change this and I want to keep this the way it is. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my power pivot, go to manage, and I'm going to build a new one. So I'm going to go under pivot table again and create this on a new worksheet, open this and pretty much the same way. I'm going to put my year under values and make sure I right click value field settings, switch this to count and I'll right click number format, make sure this is number formatting, use a comma separator. So then I'll take year and drag it to rows. This way we'll have our year to year number of crimes. So now I can take this and illustrate this on a chart. So I'm gonna go under insert, draw a line chart on this. So we can see here already that there's a pretty significant decrease in crimes compared to 2001. I'm gonna click on this and hit delete. So this is our number of crimes in 2001 and this is all the way down in 2019. So we can see that the last few years it's been pretty stable, but it's been decreasing steadily from 2001 through 2015. Now this is total crime. So this is not by any type of crime specifically. So what we could do, I'm going to add a slicer to my pivot table to be able to see this pattern for a particular type of crime. So I'm going to click on my pivot chart here, go under pivot table analyze here on top and do insert slicer to add a slicer to this, which is basically a filter. And I'll go by primary type. I'm going to hit OK. And now we have our slicer. I'm going to make this a little bigger. So for example, if we're trying to see if burglary have the same type of pattern, if I click on this, see apparently not the same pattern. Now we can see over time, there was a sharp decrease over here starting from 2011. Let's go check this for a couple of other things. Gambling apparently. Let's check for homicides. So here we go. So now we can see for homicides. So this is not looking that great. So we can see that recently, starting from 2014, there was an increase. And 2016, as you can see, it's really high. That's about 800 in that year. And then it's a little down the last few years, apparently. But again, that seems to be higher than like some of these years, like 2006, 2007. So this now gives us the ability to pretty much slice our data in different ways. If we wanted to look at a few different types of crimes, we can just press control and select those together. So maybe we add like control. I'm going to add this. Apparently human trafficking kidnapping. So now if we look at all of those combined, this is going to be our number of occurrences. Now here, the list is pretty big, but it's not too big. I'm going to try to create a chart where I can draw the line for each type of crime on the same chart, pretty similar to what I have here for different years. So we can see the pattern. I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to call this year to year, month to month. And I'm also going to add a slicer for this one too. So I'm going to go to analyze, insert slicer. I'm going to use the same one. So the primary type of crime. And now, for example, if we're trying to see if this particular pattern of having more activity during summer is true for, for example, homicides, we can do this and seems that way again, although not as much. 
And again, we could just look like a vehicle theft here. It doesn't seem like there is that much increase. There is some off years like 2001, see it's like this, but we don't want to look at our data for just one year overall. When we're looking at this, it's pretty even for that type of crime. I'm just gonna clear this filter. So that looks good. I'm gonna rename this one too. I'm gonna say year to year. So let's go back and draw another chart. I'm gonna go back to, well, let's delete this. Go back to power pivot. Save this once in a while in case it crashes on us. Go to manage and create another pivot table. Now this one, again, I'm gonna do the same type of thing. I'm gonna put years here, right click, value field settings, count, and change the number format to have a thousand separator and no decimal points. Hit okay, hit okay. Now we're gonna break this down year to year in rows again. And this time I'm gonna take the type of crime, which is primary type, and put it in columns so that we have all of these. It seems like for like this type, it wasn't being tracked for those years. And there are some type of crimes, but I'm gonna take this again and draw it on a chart. So I'll go under insert, do a line chart, 2D line, Let's see what we get. So again, we have a lot of these. And when you have a lot of them, it's difficult to draw all of those in a meaningful way. So what we could do, we could just go here and remove some of the types here so we can look at some of them instead of all of them at once. So I'm gonna unselect all. Let's say we want to look at burglary and something like robbery theft, vehicle theft, that's pretty much it on this one. So this is what we have for these four types. So there seems to be a similar pattern, I would say, between these. I'm gonna rename this worksheet, call it theft, I guess. Make a copy of this entire thing. So I'm gonna do that by pressing control and dragging this worksheet over. Now we have two of these. And for the second one, I'm gonna just go and change some of these filters. So, unselect all of this. 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 So that seems to be all drug-related crimes. Let me press OK so we can see what's going on. So apparently these are just very low numbers. Let's just look at those separately for a second. So I'm gonna remove the main one here, press okay. Yeah, so this is like six, four, two, 12. I'm not even gonna look at this, it's very low numbers. This main section by itself. So here we go, that's drug related crimes over time. Again, significant decrease. Now we might want to look at some subsections of this. So I'm gonna open this up and see what we have. Like description, let's try to break it down by description and see what happens. So there seems to be a lot of these here and it's not helping. Looking at all of this like that. I'm gonna remove this chart for a second. Let's try to just put this in rows for a second, this description, and see what type of drug-related offenses we have here. So it looks like there's possession, and then there is sale. So I'm gonna remove the year for now and try to see if we can group some of these things in more meaningful way. So I'll try to group all possessions together. So I'll just go here, try to filter to this. And that's, I guess, pretty good. So I'm gonna select all of these, right click and try to group all of these. 
it's not able to do that. So we're not able to do this directly in our power pivot. So I'm going to clear this. We're going to have to go to our data and try to categorize this in a better way. What I'll do, I'll go back to power pivot, open manage, and we'll try to create a formula that will use that description column to categorize possession versus the rest. So I'm going to create a calculated column here, call it type of drug offense, I guess, or drug related offense. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to think about the name too much. I am going to try to type it at least correctly. Okay. So here I'm going to do a search function and basically we're going to search for, see the find text, look for P O S S. And I'll be searching for that after the comma in that column called description. So again, the column you do with a square bracket, you get to that. So I'm going to close parentheses, hit enter. So what this is going to do, it's basically going to either find that or not find that possession. So when it does find the search function gives us a number and here we can't really see that because none of these have that word in them. So everything is an error. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to just wrap this inside of this function is number. And what this is going to do, it's basically just going to make anything that was found as POSS and number. So it's going to make it true and everything else is going to become false. We have all these errors apparently. So that brings us back to this search function because that's an error. This is number is not able to handle that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside of this search function and start using these extra arguments. So after the within text, which is description, I'm going to do comma. Then we have the starting position. Starting position is the position where we want to start searching for that. So that's going to be one comma. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put in quotes, not found. I'm going to remove the is number function and close this. So we still seem to get the same error, even if I remove that and it, it seems to have a problem with this. So let's replace this not found, which is text with some sort of number. So it's an integer type. So I'm going to do a zero. Okay. So now we have a zero when it's not found. And if I open this, see when it's found, it gives us a different position other than zero. So we should be able to use this in our advantage. So we can say if it's greater than zero, then we know we found it and zero means we didn't find it. So go here and do a logical test. I'm going to say, is that greater than zero? Recalculate this. It's thinking about this. So now we have false and hopefully the rest should be true. Now to make sure that this whole thing worked as expected, I'm going to get back to Excel and try to break this down by that new column. I'm going to put that above description so I can still see what's going on here. So see now the false should be the ones that are not possession, which it seems like this one is because it's P O S without double S. And the rest of these are possession. So that seems pretty good. I'm going to go back and change it to POS instead of double S to see how that works out. So I'm going to go back to manage, open this and change this formula to just be POS without double S. Going to have to give this a little time to process this. If I go back and take a look, seems to be good. So now truth is possession and the rest is something else. So I'm going to go back and try to take this formula instead of doing true and false, let's change it to possession, not possession. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to go put this whole thing inside of an if function. And I'm going to say, if this search is true, then we're going to say it's possession and let's type that right. There it is. 
and then we'll do not possession for the second one. So now if I enter, we have this renamed. If I go back to this, see it says not possession and this one is possession. And what this is going to allow us to do now, I can remove this description out of here. And we can just have this. And then I can take that and break it down year to year again. And I'm going to move that possession, the type to columns. So now we have possession versus not possession. Now we can make a chart out of this. So interesting dynamic here that for possession types of crimes. See, there was a lot of decrease. It's either decrease in arrests or decrease in, you know, actual possession. Hard to say. So I'm going to rename this drug related offenses, something like that. So there we go. We did a few different types of data analysis of different type of crimes. We can see some patterns over time, that should give you a little idea how you can apply power pivot with your data. And as you can see, it works pretty well for a data this size. So we'll try to do some more types of analysis on this data in the next video. But for this one, that should be it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.